That's Dr. William Cluck III. He's a, an internist. He's a, he's a physician, a famous physician. And um, he sings and dances, but mainly what he does is he solves the problems of um, poor um, animal patients. For example, Kenya the kangaroo over here in purple, who can't talk as other kangaroos can. And she comes to Dr. Cluck and he upside down solves her problem. And um, he drinks the gin and tonic between patients. And um, some Christians overseas asked me to fix that, so now he drinks ginger ale in a, in a new story. But the truth is between us that it's really gin. He just says it's ginger ale. Um, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so, but I'm here to talk about being a smellologist today. And um, I've spent the past 20 years smelling thousands of people's breath, underarms, and other places I'm not going to go into. And uh, I tell my mother, who's over there, Mom, it, it could have been worse. I could have been selling hot dogs. It's at home, I'm warning you, it's unpleasant you have to practice. But this is also the way to clean the tongue with a tongue cleaner. So are you watching? Yes. Okay, who isn't watching? No, that's a joke, okay. Okay. That is how you clean your tongue. Ronnie, would you pass this around, please? <laughs> but, but you can see that there is a certain yellow discharge here. Is it yellow or white? It depends on how much of it is from your nose. <laughs> Use a plastic spoon like that? Or? Yes, um, there's an unbreakable plastic spoon. Or, ready, we're Dr. Mel's tongue cleaner. Tongue cleaner. <laughs> so if you want to clean your tongue, this is what you have to do. Go back gently towards your throat and just sweep the mucus off. The idea is not to traumatize your tongue, because the tongue is a sensitive organ, just to get the outer layers of dirt, debris, and mucus off the tongue. So why don't you tell us what we can buy your tongue? At the end of the lecture. <laughs> it's not surprising to a bacteriologist that bad breath comes mostly from bacteria in the mouth. Because most odors come from bacteria. Body odor comes from odor caused by bacteria in the armpit. Human and animal diseases that smell often come from bacteria. Sewage is food. Spoilage of food, barnyard odor, sewage, the odor on a wet towel. Um, so how do we measure bad breath? We've developed over the years instrumentation and laboratory tests, but you might not believe it. The gold standard, the way that scientists still measure bad breath is they have a smelly and a smeller. The smelly goes and the smeller goes <laughs> and you score it on the Yitkin Halishan scale. <laughs> I'm just going to finish off with one of the interesting things about bad breath, which is called the bad breath paradox. And that is that for some reason, if we're worried about bad breath, we can lick our wrists, we can smell our breath under the blanket, we can give it a schmeck of the telephone or the microphone, but uh, we cannot judge our own bad breath. Their breath smells bad. I just had an email from a lady from England with its concern. And in my book, and in my lectures, and in my clinic, I tell people the best way to find out whether you have bad breath or not is to ask an adult in your family. Cheapest, simplest way. And if they tell you that you do have a problem, Ask them whether it comes from your mouth or from your nose. If it comes from your mouth, go see a good dentist. There are several of those in the Adana. If it comes from your nose, go see an EMT special. How can you tell whether it's from your nose or your mouth? Ah, okay. Um, it's very simple. You, um, you breathe out of your mouth, or count aloud, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the air coming from your mouth mostly. And then you close your lips and you breathe out from your nose like this. If your nose is blocked, then you might be a mouth breather, in which case you have dry mouth, you might have bad breath. Mm -hmm. But you breathe out through your nose and you ask the person, who should be an adult close to you, someone I call a confidant, 
whether the odor is coming primarily from your mouth or from your nose. So here's the checklist. Proper dental care and hygiene. Interdental cleaning. We talked about all these things. Deep tongue cleaning but very gentle. What we didn't talk about is having a good breakfast. It turns out that people who don't have breakfast tend to have bad breath later on in the morning or midday. Sometimes they just have a cup of coffee. And there's something about having a good breakfast. Just eating healthy, rough food cleans the tongue in and of itself. And actually, researchers have shown just by eating something, you can reduce the volatile level by about 70%. So it's important to have a good breakfast. It's important to drink enough liquid so that you have enough saliva to wash away the bacteria excess. Gargling before bedtime. And if your mouth is dry during the day, or if you've just eaten something that could cause bad breath, milk products, fish, meat, you don't have any other utensils, you can just grab a piece of chewing gum and chew it just for a couple of minutes. Thank you. I can answer some questions. And I can play you a song. I'll dedicate this song to my parents who sent me to study piano many years ago. <laughs> <laughs>